choosing a monitor can be quite difficult. These days graphics cards have become cheaper, so everyone is upgrading their hardware. But when you have to decide which monitor to pick, that might actually make you think. There is a huge number of models with incomprehensible names, and normally people use their monitors for quite a long period of time. Today we will try to answer all questions on what gaming monitor to choose in 2023, why many models that you may come across are not a good choice, what monitors you should consider depending on your graphics card, what things to keep in mind, and what marketing BS not to trust. This is MK. Today I'm gonna give you a guide on gaming monitors. Let's get down to it. And to begin with, let's determine where we draw the red line. You should consider buying a gaming monitor if you are armed with the RTX 3050 or RX 6600 graphics cards. Both can be found within the range of $250 to $370. AMD's solution has an advantage in raw performance, but Nvidia is better at ray tracing and has the magical DLSS anti-aliasing, which gives a significant FPS boost, which is actually a cool feature for such an entry-level gaming graphics card. If we are talking about more or less modern games as of 2023, with such cards it makes sense to stick to Full HD resolution, which in most cases would provide you with about 60 FPS at high settings. In older games and using DLSS, you can expect under 100 frames per second, not to mention eSports games. So with the RTX 3050 or RX 6600, you can already consider a simple fast monitor, especially if you're planning to upgrade to a more powerful GPU in the future. Of course, 2K or 240Hz are out of question in this case. It makes sense to stop at Full HD and 144Hz. Just to keep things simple, please note that by 144Hz, we also mean 165Hz and 175Hz monitors. In fact, there is no big difference between them. The panels used are all 144Hz, and a higher refresh rate is achieved by simple overclock. Therefore, in this video, I will refer to all such monitors as 144Hz. What should you pay attention to when choosing them? Firstly, the diagonal. 21 inch is rather small, but on a 27 inch Full HD panel, the pixels would be the size of your fist. So, for 1080p resolution, the best option is 24 inches. At the same time, it makes sense to forget about TN panels. The VA or IPS solutions are only slightly more expensive but at the same time, provide a much juicier and more pleasant to the eye picture. I think you can see everything for yourself on these laptops here, released in 2022. One has an IPS panel, and the other has a cheap TN panel. As for choosing between the VA and IPS, that's more like a matter of taste. I have both. The first one has better contrast, but mediocre viewing angles, ghosting behind fast objects, and really not the best color accuracy. On the IPS panel, the picture is more vivid, but the lower contrast and glow effect certainly make it worse. What else should you keep in mind? Most gaming monitors, even the expensive ones, already come with AMD FreeSync or even FreeSync Premium. The latter not only gives a smooth picture within a certain refresh rate range, but also can double the frames at a refresh rate below 30Hz, returning the picture its smoothness. Still, this feature is quite useless since the output delay will still remain huge. So, do not expect that some kind of magic will turn your 20 FPS into real 40. The main pitfall of FreeSync monitors is that almost all models will have frame sync working within the range of 48Hz to the maximum refresh rate. But there are exceptions with a narrow range starting from 60Hz. And if your FPS drops below this mark, you will see the tearing effect. I will leave a link to the website with all FreeSync monitors in the description. And I will also mention just in case that FreeSync monitors work fine with NVIDIA graphics cards. In this case, they are called G-Sync compatible, and this option can be activated in the driver settings. NVIDIA also has a list of all tested monitors where FreeSync will definitely work without issues. But even if you can't find your monitor there, the G-Sync option will still be available in the NVIDIA panel. At the same time, going for the real G-Sync, which is implemented using a special chip in the monitor, is rather pointless. The only tangible thing that it will give in practice is that the frame sync will work starting from 30Hz, which is unlikely to be useful in your real gaming scenarios. Especially when you consider how much more you have to pay for this chip, and that the number of models with G-Sync on the market is extremely small. Similarly, it doesn't make much sense to look for models with Premium Pro or G-Sync Ultimate. The main feature of such monitors is the support of realistic HDR, 
That, while NVIDIA quietly removed from the certification requirements the brightness of 100 candelas a year ago. So, in reality, this certificate doesn't mean anything anymore. And to be honest, in relatively inexpensive gaming monitors, HDR is pure marketing anyway. This is not the HDR that is the real HDR. The fact is that most panels and monitors ranging from $200 to $300 are only 6-bit, and they output 16 million shades for 8-bit color only thanks to the FRC technology based on the pixel flickering. Therefore, you should not expect a true 10-bit picture out of such monitors. And given the relatively low brightness, often below 300 candelas, turning on HDR can actually even spoil the picture. And surely, let's talk about the response time a bit. Here you can see all sorts of specs. Some have 1 millisecond, others have 4, sometimes both numbers can be found within the description of one and the same monitor, it's all about how you calculate it. Some manufacturers use the time it takes for the ghosting effect to go away. Others, the time it takes for the pixel to switch from one shade of grey to another. Overall, all of these methods of calculation are pure marketing, which doesn't reflect the real dynamics in games. Therefore, it is definitely not worth relying on this indicator. The main thing to remember is that the vast majority of modern panels are fast enough to output real 144Hz. Now let's talk about popular graphics cards that are capable of providing hundreds of frames per second not only in old games or esports titles, but also in the novelties of the gaming industry. We are talking of course about the RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti, as well as the RX 6600 XT and 6700 XT. Their price range is $260 to $500, while the performance for such money is just excellent. These cards easily compete with the 5-year-old flagship, the legendary GTX 1080 Ti. Such cards have no problems with Full HD whatsoever. I mean, of course you can load such a card to the extent when it just won't handle it, by moving all the sliders in the graphics settings to the right as well as enabling the quality mode of ray tracing, but on the other hand, if you sacrifice the image quality just by a bit, you will have 100 FPS in the new games of 2023. Does it make sense to consider such cards for 2K gaming? In general, no. The 3060 Ti has barely enough VRAM even for Full HD, and the mid-tier GPUs of the previous gen handle such a resolution with difficulty. DLSS and FSR will become mandatory, and you will have to count on high graphic settings at 60 FPS. Of course, not in every game, we have tested the 3060 in 2K, but still, for these cards, the optimal resolution and refresh rate are Full HD at 144Hz. That way, you can appreciate both quality graphics and the smoothness. The nuances of choice here are all the same. It's IPS or VA, 24 inches diagonal, pay attention to free sync and forget about HDR and response time. Yes, it's cruel, I know, I have no doubt there are some special cases, but we're going up a level higher in terms of requirements. What should you take for games if you want a large 27 inch or even 31 inch monitor, but you don't want to look at large pixels that you would get at full HD resolution? Well, in this case, you should go for 2K. Yes, I know, it's not exactly 2K, but it's common to call it that. But it's worth remembering that it's quite demanding in terms of graphics card, especially if you want to get more than the standard 60fps. The minimum suitable models are the RTX 3070 or its TI version, and from Team Red, the RX 6800 or its XT version. Yes, such cards are expensive. They are asked for an average of above $600, such is the price of luxury and comfort. But on the other hand, their performance is over the edge. The RTX 3070 stands at the level of the previous gen flagship, the RTX 2080 Ti. However, here you need to remember that modern games in high resolutions are very hungry of video memory, and Nvidia's 8GB solutions are already close to their limits. But still, if you do not indulge in Ultra HD textures and turn on the LSS or FSR in quality mode, then such cards are able to produce under 100 frames per second in new games. And therefore, the 2K at 144Hz segment begins with them. And here you have to consider even more nuances. All these fast 1080p monitors are closer to the cheap low-end segment, and the budget will not allow you to cram a lot of interesting features in there. However, the 2K resolution is something that makes sense for the owners of expensive PCs over $1500 or even $2000, and these people probably can pay some extra for a really cool monitor. The general logic here is the same. For just $300, you can find solutions with simple 27-inch 6-bit IPS or VA panels with a refresh rate of 144Hz and fake HDR. 
but if you're willing to pay some $150 more, you can get a lot more out of it too. I'm gonna try to explain myself using this MSI Optics MAG321QR as an example. This is a rather large monitor at 31.5 inches. While the standard contrast ratio of inexpensive IPS panels is 1000 to 1, here it is 1200 to 1. In addition, this panel is true 8-bit, which coupled with FRC allows this monitor to output true HDR picture. And a nice bonus from a more expensive panel is increased color accuracy. In this case, it is 27% wider than sRGB and closer to DCI-P3, so the picture will look more vibrant. Also, the MSI monitors have a very convenient menu to my taste. Okay, with 2K everything is clear. 27 inches or 32, that's up to you. 4K resolution with just 8GB of video memory is out of question. And what interesting things can be found in Full HD monitors? Of course, you can stay at the baseline solutions with 144Hz for $200. I mean, the RTX 3070 or RX 6800 have no problems with 1080p at all, and they're often capable of rendering hundreds of frames per second with high graphic settings even without DLSS or FSR. But what if you want even more smoothness? You can try a 240Hz monitor. And yes, there is a rather subtle point here. If almost everyone can see the difference between 60 and 144 Hz, then between 144 and 240 Hz, it is much less noticeable. And it is often perceived only in direct comparison with slowed down video. Here, everything is individual. On top of that, at 1.5 to 200 FPS, often the performance limiter will no longer be your video card, but the processor that is not able to prepare so many frames. Therefore, in mid-tier builds, it makes sense to count on 240Hz only in the case of eSports, dropping closer to 100fps in single-player games. The jokes are over. What to choose if you're rocking the RTX 3080 or RX 6900 XT, or even something from the NVIDIA's 40 series? Full HD is blasphemy for them. 2K is already the baseline. Of course, you can again stop at simple 6-bit IPS panels, but when building a computer for over $3,000, picking up a cheap monitor like that just won't do, especially since the more expensive segment has got a lot to offer. For example, curved panels. Thus, the distance to any point of the monitor from the user's eyes is the same, which increases the immersion in the game. In addition, it masks an unpleasant glow effect when the corners of the monitor acquire parasitic orange-purple shades. I have a curved monitor myself, and I'm enjoying it. And the panels are also becoming more interesting as the price goes up. For example, as in this brand new monitor, the MPG Artemis 273CQRX-QD. This is one of the few monitors on the market that has a layer of nanoparticles called quantum dots. The principle of their operation looks like magic. As soon as you apply voltage to such crystals, they begin to emit light with a strictly defined wavelength and with great brightness. This technology quickly caught on in TVs and now it has finally reached monitors too, which allows you to get a very wide color accuracy, more than 90% of Adobe RGB. The picture turns out to be very colorful and vivid, which is especially noticeable when watching HDR content. In addition, if you are looking for a monitor for the RTX 40 series, 240Hz panels can be considered not only for Full HD, thanks to the frame generation technology in DLSS 3, a frame rate of more than 1,500 can be reached in 2K. There are so-called ultra-wide 3K monitors that have a resolution of 3,440 per 1,440 pixels and an aspect ratio of 21 to 9. Most modern games already know how to work with such things. And taking into account the horizontality of our vision, immersion in the gameplay turns out to be better. Finally, the last level for the owners of the RTX 4080 and 4090 is 4K monitors with 144Hz. Thanks to DLSS 3, 100 fake 4K frames are now available on top and video cards. And at this resolution, the visual artifacts will be almost invisible, but the clarity of the image will pleasantly surprise you. 4K at 28 inches will give as much as 150 dpi, which is comparable to quality laptops, and from a distance of a meter, the picture will be razor sharp. There are no more nuances here. Such panels are quite new, they are all at least 8-bit and bright enough for true HDR. Finally, a few words about OLED monitors, which have already begun to appear on the market. Many owners of IPS monitors, tired of their low contrast and glare, can't wait to get their hands on OLEDs, because organic LEDs, on the one hand, will show a perfect black color, and on the other, 
excellent color accuracy. Alas, so far there is no good news here. The first representatives suffer from a lot of teeth and problems, mainly just related to the type of pixels. The fact is that organic light emitting diodes have an unpleasant property of burning in over time. So manufacturers use very aggressive brightness adjustment techniques depending on the amount of white color on the screen. And not only will such sudden changes of brightness be very noticeable when used, but they can be turned off. In addition, they use various tricks such as shifting pixels or briefly turning off the monitor every few hours. Obviously, few people will be pleased to see notifications about this during their gameplay. MSI does have such monitors too. It's something very expensive, and if you're interested, I may as well ask them to send me one. I would consider waiting for the new generation of OLED panels to appear within the more familiar 27-inch format. Such monitors are already actively represented by various companies, and the price tag for them turns out to be more adequate, about $1,000 or $1,300. In addition, there's a chance that there will not be such an aggressive brightness adjustment on smaller diagonal. Let's wait for some reviews that will tell us about it. This was MK. Choose monitors wisely. I'll see you again. Bye.